You know, I'm a lifelong business man who never held elective office, and I ran for office because I was completely fed up with politics as usual in Annapolis and in Washington. And quite frankly, I still am. People have been in the seafood business around here for as far back as you can go. Probably 80% of this town depended on the Chesapeake Bay for its livelihood. The Worcester fleet has went from 132 boats down to two. When we saw nothing happening for year after year after year, it really become very troubling and, and uh, heartbreaking, to tell you the truth. I started a group called Change Maryland, the largest nonpartisan grassroots organization in the state. It's how I became governor, because I brought together Democrats, independents, and Republicans who were focused on a better future for our state. Oh, man, the riots, the riots were, that, that was the worst time of my life in Baltimore ever. Our community on fire to see people fighting and, you know, all kinds of mayhem getting calls from around the country. It was painful. Governor Hogan showed up. I remember seeing him the next day, right here, right here in this corner. He had to be here. I mean, how could he? I guess he didn't have to, but his team came, the National Guard, because the city was out of control. And, and, and I got to say this. Baltimore's a nine-to-one Democratic town. So it took a Republican to come here to bring the people together. That's what I saw. The people I talk to feel just like I do. They're mad at Republicans and they're mad at Democrats. And they can't figure out why. People just won't focus on the solutions and fixing the problems. This is the roof from the Kirk Recreation Center feels like a promise to my mom. 2014, I wanted to run into the governor. He had went to the church and visited the pastor. Oh, and he told the pastor, he remembered my mom, and he had promised, he said, well, you know, win or lose, I'm gonna get him some help down there. Cause I mean, like three days later, after he won the election, he sent me some help. I said, I've been around all this time, three years now, and didn't get no help from nobody else. I'm like, this man get in office and only been in there a week, and already I got some help really. You got a white Republican governor. Hey, he act like a regular human being to me. The public felt a new sense of optimism coming from the governor, and our message was always very positive. Even when we were attacked, the governor was positive. When he had cancer, he was very positive. I think that helped turn the ship of state in a different direction. After 43 tax hikes in a row, we had lost 8,000 businesses and 100,000 jobs. And I said we were gonna put Maryland on a new path and change Maryland for the better, try to help businesses grow and create more jobs for our citizens. And we've dropped our unemployment rate all the way down to 3.8%. Went from losing 100,000 jobs to gaining 130,000 jobs. We now have the third highest rate of job growth in America, second highest rate of private sector job growth. When I decided to run for governor, Maryland's overall economic performance ranked 49th out of 50 states. We're now number seven in America, up 42 spots. And that's the best economic recovery of any state in the country. We have seen a sea change of optimism in our state, and that's because of the policies of the governor, creating an ecosystem that makes it exciting and optimistic for job creators to go out there and hire talent, and we're giving them a way to pull up into the middle class. We're investing in new technology, new robotics, hiring new people. We make things here and we export to China. I'm a Maryland boy, and that's why I want to grow the jobs right here in my state. Three years ago, no major company would consider coming to Maryland. We had not only lost almost all of our Fortune 500 companies, but some great, iconic Maryland companies like McCormick, like Marriott, were all talking about leaving state. We reversed that trend. We kept Marriott, we kept McCormick. They raised our taxes to the point we were considering moving out of the state of Maryland. An overwhelming number of our citizens were fleeing the state. The largest percentage of them, about 18,000 of them, went to Virginia. We were losing businesses to Virginia, jobs, taxpayers. We reversed all three of those trends. We have not had a single tax increase the entire time that I've been governor, and we've cut taxes three years in a row. 
We were the only state in the nation to tax the rain. And we eliminated the rain tax just like we promised we would. We went from last place in the Mid-Atlantic region to first place in the Mid-Atlantic region. We want to stay here, grow our business here because of Governor Hogan. The previous governor raised tolls between two and 300 percent. So we eliminated 255 fees and we cut tolls for the first time in 50 years by $270 million. He lowered the tolls and I saw a change in Maryland instantly. You know, if $25 doesn't seem like a lot, but to a single mom it is. We now have a transportation plan that has $14.8 billion worth of improvements. We've repaved more than one third of the entire state highway system, nearly 8,000 lane miles. We came up with a proposal, a public-private partnership, the largest one in North America on transportation with no tax increases for the citizens, to add four lanes to 270, all the way from the Beltway to Frederick, to add four lanes on the Capitol Beltway, 495, all the way from the Woodrow Wilson Bridge to the American Legion Bridge. I registered as a Democrat. If you look at Governor Hogan's accomplishments, he's fully funded the Chesapeake and Atlantic Coastal Bay Trust, first time in history. He has spent billions of dollars on all types of bay restoration projects. We brought together the environmentalists, the ag community, the poultry industry, the business community, the Eastern Shore, Western Shore. We all sat down and hammered out an agreement. Only he has brought us all together. In the past, uh, the former administrations would have nothing to do with that. We now have the cleanest Chesapeake Bay in more than a quarter century. I think it's a very different place that we're in than what it would have been if the governor hadn't been elected. Right after I was elected, I appointed the lieutenant governor to chair the Opioid and Heroin Emergency Task Force. I remember the first time I had to stand up in front of somebody and say, you know, I buried my brother-in-law eight days ago. My brother-in-law died as a result of a heroin addiction eventually, but it started from a prescription pain med. It was incredible to take the pain that I was going through and to be able to at least start with a solution that would help somebody else. You know, my counterpart up in Baltimore County, he's a Democrat. You have to have someone in recovery. You have to have someone from law enforcement. You have to have a hospital that's working together. All of those things, when you talk about saving lives, don't care whether you're Republican or Democrat. And that, to me, is how a governor is supposed to serve people. Through my cancer treatment, I developed a relationship with a whole bunch of these kids. And really tough, brave young kids are still smiling after going through terrible things. It changed my life. Andrew came up to me, he was five, and he said, I know you're gonna be going through chemotherapy. Um, my mommy helped me write a list for you. Listen to your favorite music like somewhere over the rainbow. And he says, you know, the doctors are really there to help you. You might not like them at first, but they are. Don't forget to bring your favorite stuffed animal and blanket to the hospital. He said, find a hugging person. Mine is my mommy. Remember to put the nun nun cream on before they give you a pokey. I got to the hospital. I talked to my oncologist. I'm like, hey, where's the num num cream? These guys just keep giving me the pokey. And he's now finishing up his chemo, and I couldn't be more excited. Whether you're the governor of Maryland or you're a seven-year-old little boy, it's important that people have those connections. Things that we've been able to make happen just by building friendships through the governor and like his friends. We got a toy drive coming up two days before Christmas. I think last year was like 4,000 toys. Man. Governor Hogan is a friend of this community. We operate, man, off of friendships. It is what it is. You know, we're making it work.